Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We are going to take a look at linking in Dreamweaver CS6. I'm going to show you how to create links and some cool tips and tricks uh, along the way. So without further ado, let's jump into Dreamweaver and take a look at this. So I've got sort of a mock-up of a website here that we're going to be using and we're going to be creating links here in the navigation bar. You can see I've already created one link, Films. And uh, this is just some CSS that's automatically attaching to our links. So if I take music and convert it to a link, it's going to look just like that. Now, this, these are just little bits of text. Um, you could create links out of your H1 tag or my H1 or H2 tag, whatever that is here or down here. Or I could create you know, a link out of this text down here or even an image. The principles that I'm going to show you are all the same across the board here in Dreamweaver. Um, it's just you know, kind of the content that's going to change. So whether or not you want to just use body text or an image or whatever, that's all the same. Uh, so Dreamweaver makes it pretty easy for us. So let's go ahead and talk about the first kind of link, which is probably the simplest, most basic, yet arguably the most important kind of link, and that is just linking to another page within your website, and specifically within our Dreamweaver site here, because Dreamweaver gives us some tools to uh, create links. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look over first to my files panel and see I have this folder here called music, and within that music folder, see, we have this index.html. Now, when I create new pages like this, I like to drop them within folders and just name the actual page index.html. And the reason is, in a nutshell, instead of telling somebody to go to your website slash music.html, uh, you know, that you are that whole long URL or whatever, you can just tell them to go to your website, you know, dot com slash music. And the browser is already looking for that index page within each folder. So it knows that that's the default page to bring up. So without getting into crazy, ridiculous uh, depth and listening to me ramble on and on, that's why I do that. So the point is here, we're going to link to this index.html page first. So what we want to do is go, hey, window, properties. It's going to bring up my properties panel, which is hidden down here. And I'm going to select this bit of text, music. And Dreamweaver, we see it has this link input down here, which is great. So we can manually type in the URL or copy and paste a URL. However, for our pages here within Dreamweaver, we have this tool called the Pick Whip. And you can just grab it and point right over here to index.html. This is within the music folder. And there we go. You can see we've just created that link. So I'm going to save my page, Commander Control S, and I'm going to hit F12, which is going to bring this up in my browser. And you can see I've got films and music. And if I hit music, there we go, Magic Hat Music. So this would theoretically be the music page. And then I can just go back. So we've just created our first link. Let's jump back into Illustrator. Now let's take a look at linking to external pages, pages that are not within your website, something where you will have to sort of paste in that URL. So I'm just going to go grab my photography website and shameless plug to myself, ndphoto.com. And I'm going to just highlight the URL, Command or Control C to copy it. Come back in here to Dreamweaver, and I'm going to highlight Festival 2013. And again, look down here to the Properties panel, find the link area, Command or Control V to paste it in there, and just click away. And you can see that we have created the link for Festival uh, 2013, which is an external link. So I'm going to just save this, and I'm going to close out this. And I can actually just refresh this file here. Once once you save the file within Dreamweaver, you don't need to keep, you know, hitting F12 and previewing, uh, you know, a new version of the file. If you just refresh, you can see Festival 2013 it has turned into a link. And if I hit that, there we go. We're now linked to this photography page. Great. Now we can go back. Now one of the things that uh, is important is this little area here in the properties panel called target. So this guy right here. And the reason that this is important, it well it really becomes important when we talk about these external links, uh, links that aren't going to other pages in your website. Because see if somebody's on my page and I hit festival 2013, well, great, this new website shows up, but my website's gone away. You can see it's nowhere to be seen. So if there's great material on this website, they might be so captivated by this website that they completely forget about you and stay over there with them. We don't want that to happen. So using target, what we can do, really the important ones are underscore blank and underscore self. Underscore blank is what we want. Underscore blank is going to open the link in a new tab or a new window depending on the user's default in that browser. Um, so the important thing to take away is that it's going to leave your website there and just open up a new tab for the thing you're linking to. Uh, underscore self, 
uh, that just opens the link within the same window, which is the default. So there's, typically, you're not going to need to use that. Underscore parent and underscore top, uh, nobody really uses them. Uh, so we're not even going to discuss them here. So now that I have this set to underscore blank, you can see it's this link. Target underscore blank, great. So that that this should now open up in a new tab or a new window. So I'm going to go back and refresh. Nothing looks like it's changed. However, when I hit 2013, you can see there we go. Magic Hat website is still here, and the photography web page opens up in a new tab. So that's all great. Now let's talk about linking to documents. Not only can you link to other pages, which pages are technically documents, but what I mean by documents are like images, music files, videos, PDFs, zip files, all kinds of things like that. Uh, actually, a quick tip, if you want to force a download, it's typically best to link to a zip file because a zip file can't be displayed in a browser, at least none that I've seen and that zip file will be forced to download and the user will then be able to open up that zip file and extract, let's say, an image that's in there. Um, so just something to keep in mind if you want to force somebody to download an image. Maybe you're afraid that somebody it doesn't or isn't web savvy enough or computer savvy enough to know that, hey, there's this image here, I can just right click and save as and download the image that way. Not everybody knows that, so sometimes we want to force a download. However, there are plenty of things that browsers can display, such as images and uh, most sound files and videos files and even PDFs so we're going to link this little about us text to this PDF that I have here and it's actually quite a large PDF I should have probably used the smaller one but that's all right so we're gonna use the pick whip again and just go ahead boom grab PDF and save this now with something like a download you can also target and open it up in a new tab but what usually happens in the case of the PDF it'll just open the PDF in a new tab in the case of like a download like a zip file or something it's just gonna open up like a blank tab or a blank window and download the file through there so just be aware of that it is possible but for the most part you're not really going to use that so I'm gonna go back out to my browser refresh the page you can see about us is working and if I click that here we go. It's going to load up the PDF, which again, like I said, it's massive and I'm not going to sit here and wait for it. But that links to a document. So we can link to documents. We can link to pages that are not on our site. We can link to pages within our site. One of the other things you can link to is an email address. And now this is not creating a contact form, but instead what it's doing is basically saying, hey, look, you know, let my email address is here. You can click on this and it's going to open up Microsoft Outlook or Mozilla Thunderbird or some kind of whatever the user's default email client is with your uh, email address pre-populated in there. So what we want to do is go ahead and actually let's just create a new link down here. Let's just say like, hey, send me an email. And then we'll highlight this text. And it's pretty simple actually to create uh, an email link. We're going to highlight the text and we're going to go insert where is it? Hyperlink email link. There it is. And you can see here, Dreamweaver is just saying, all right, you've highlighted this text. So I'm assuming that's the text you want. And then your email address. So I'm just going to go with tutvid at tutvid.com and hit OK. And we can see, there we go. We have an email link. And if we look down here in the properties panel, look at what's happening. The link is mail to colon tutvid at tutvid.com. So that's the little bit of text that you would add if you just want to punch this in manually. Mail to colon and then the email address. Now, the cool thing about this and a little trick is you can not only pre-populate the email address, but you can also pre-populate a subject line. So this is just one less thing for somebody to do uh, when they're writing you an email, but also it's going to help you sort of identify emails from your website more quickly when you're looking through your inbox. So right here at the end of mail to colon tutvid at tutvid.com, we're going to go ahead and say uh, question mark subject equals and then you can just put whatever you want the subject line to be. So we can just say goofy subject line, right? Like that. And save this. And I'm not going to test this only because it's going to open up uh, my default email client, which I believe right now is set with my photography email, and it's got like all my personal information, you know, lined up in there. Which I trust you guys, but there's probably one creeper at least that's going to watch this video, and I'm pretty cool with most people, but eh, we'll be we'll be careful about that. So, but it does work. I promise you, it works. Um, and if you're following along, you can try it. And if you're using Outlook or any email client, it's going to pop open that email client and say, "Hey, here you go." 
start entering your information and send away. So it's really, really easy to just create uh, an email link as well, just like that, and with a little bonus that you can pre-populate that subject line as well, which is super cool. So now the other kind of link that I want to talk about uh, before we kind of wrap this up is linking to an anchor. Now an anchor is basically a portion of your page that you identify using uh, an ID. So let's just say here we have our next link is photos. So I'm going to scroll down the page here to photos. And I'm going to highlight photos and I can make this the anchor that I can link to. So when I link to this, it'll take me to the photos part of this web page, which is useful. So all I need to do is highlight that type and look down here to the properties panel, see ID. So right now it says none. So we're just going to give it an ID of photos. Well, if I can spell, that was really bad. Uh, an ID of photos. The ID can be anything you want it to be. For the most part, there are some limitations to the, the things you can use and numbers and, you know, there's, there are different things you can do. But we're going to keep it simple here and just say photos. We know what that is. We know what it's for. And you can see right there, ID is photos. Nothing changed as far as we can tell. So all we need to do now is up here, highlight our photos text. And in the link area, we're going to link to that photos ID. So we're going to identify that using the pound symbol or the hashtag or the number sign. And so we're going to say hashtag photos. And that's it. We've created a link. Let's save it and go back out to our site. Refresh the page. There's photos. And if I click on it, you can see it brings me right down to the photos area. Remember, this is our anchor. So that's the sort of, it's an identifier, if you will. So uh, when we click on photos, it's saying, all right, where's that photos anchor? Boom, the photos anchor is here. And it just shoots you right down the page. And there are actually some cool uh, jQuery plugins and things you can find that'll actually like smooth scroll down to it, and just glide right down to, you know, different anchors that you've linked to on your page. A lot of neat stuff you can do, but we're not going to get into that. So the last couple things to cover is, well, are the fact that Dreamweaver will automatically update links for you. It, one of the great things about Dreamweaver is all of the site organizational tools that it offers and the automatic link updating is just one thing that's really, really awesome about this. So let's say we take our music index page and for some reason we drag it up into our CSS folder, right? So uh, Dreamweaver is going to say, hey, we've got to update links in the following files, index.html and css slash index.html. So I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Go ahead and update that. And this is really cool because now if we go back to here and I choose music, remember I haven't refreshed this page so it'll take me to the old URL. Hey, website's not found because remember within the music folder we no longer have index.html in there. So if I go back and I refresh the page, music, there we go. So Dreamweaver automatically updated that link. So it's no longer pointing to music slash index.html, but you can see now it's pointing to CSS slash index.html. And then if I grab this and move it back to the music folder, it's going to say, hey, I need to update these files again. I can say, all right, update them. And the link is automatically updated. And the same goes for if I just want to change the name of this file or anything like that. It's just useful time-saving stuff that Dreamweaver does for you. And then you would take and re-upload all, uh, all those files and your website would be set. All the links would work. It'd be great. And the last little feature is just Dreamweaver's ability to change links site-wide. So let's say you had in your site here uh, 20 links. Well, actually, no, here's a good example. For our exterior site, we're linking out to my site, ndphoto.com. Well, this films link I also have going to ndphoto.com. So let's say I no longer want any links going out to ndphoto.com, but instead I want them to go to tutvid.com. No problem. What we can do is go site, change link site-wide, and we're going to say, hey, change all the links to, so everything that's currently linking to ndphoto.com, we're going to change them into links that go to tutvid.com. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to say, all right, I just need to update this one file, index.html. We have these two links that are going to ndphoto.com. All right, update it. And if I check it out, we can see that's now pointing to tutvid.com. And that is also now pointing to tutvid.com. So just like that, we're able to go in and very, very quickly update links site-wide. If I refresh the page, I can go ahead and click this. Remember, it's going to open it in a new tab. And for some reason, it didn't work. Let's try that again. Here we go. Let's save the page. There we go. It helps to save. And refresh. 
And there we go. It is now going to tutvid.com. And it's also still opening it up in the new tab. So that's all great. So really, really cool feature. Um, just remember to save after you use it, else you're not going to see uh, the differences. So that's it. Um, so the one thing I would leave you guys with is just remember to link. It's The whole web is just a series of link after link after link after link. And the more you link to other people's websites and people link back to you, it's good for your website. It's good for the SEO of your website. Um, and people just like when you link to their stuff and it's kind of cool to do. So that's it for this one. I hope you've learned a thing or two. And check out the other tutorials available at tutvid.com. Take care.